everyone, it's Arlene from Arlene's Creations, and today I'm going to show you how I made my scarecrow out of planks of wood. So, um, as you can see, I just have one by fours. That one's actually a piece of scrap wood I found in the garbage. So I'm going to cut my all my planks down to, um, you know, at least I'm going to make them three feet high. So each one's going to be cut to um, three feet. So I'm just cutting this piece of wood down with my jigsaw. I don't have the best table to do this kind of work on. I got to make like a shop in the garage or downstairs, but for now I'm doing it outside. So I'm just speeding up the video so it doesn't bore you. But what I did was, um, I actually have four planks here, but I ended up adding a fifth, which I did not film. So now that I have my uh, pieces of wood all cut to about three feet, there's one that's a little bit longer, but it's all right. Um, it's a tiny bit, like a half inch. So now I have my liquid nails. You can use wood glue, any type of wood glue. And I'm going to um, put the uh, liquid nails on the inside of each piece of wood and I'm going to adhere them together so it makes one big board. So I'm just scraping the liquid nail so that it covers the whole entire surface of the wood. And then I'll be putting them all together, lining them up and putting them together and then putting a big clamp on them. And that needs to dry for at least six to eight hours. It was so hot out this day. It looks like it's a little breezy, but it must have been like 95 degrees. The humidity was like 100%. It was so hot that it really dried very quickly. I think like in four hours, I was able to take the clamps off and then put the back brace on. But so what you want to do is once you have, and you can make this as tall as you want, as small as you want, but the ba basic concept is to, with, Nick, with the liquid nails or with the wood glue, is to just um, put it on the both sides, stick them together, and then you're going to see how I clamp it. So I have orders for quite a few of these scarecrows. So I'm only showing how I put one together, but I actually made two this day. And I have another three that I still have to make. So I'll be working on them next week. Right now I'm in the middle of doing a 200 uh, piece soap order. And I have a cookie order that I have to do for um, 40 cookies for a bridal shower. So I'm going to have to stop the woodworking for a couple days and get that stuff done. And then today is Wednesday. So probably Monday, I'm going to start my, uh, my other scarecrows. So I just put the, the uh, liquid nails on the sides. Yeah, when I looked at it, I thought that the four planks, like the scarecrow face, looked too skinny. So then I unclamped it, like after an hour, and I said, ah, oh, let me add another plank. So I actually ended up doing five. So you just want to make sure that the whole surface is covered. You could do this with pallet wood. If you have pallets that you can take apart, and you, you can use the wood from old pallets or any scrap wood that you have. This I think is just, um, there's a the couple of pieces are either pine or common board. I actually just found all these. Someone was throwing them out. So I said, oh, I can make stuff with it and sell them. So we're just gonna put this together. So now I'm putting my big clamps on it. These clamps are about, I want to say maybe $13, $14 a piece, maybe $15. But they work really well. And um, 
Then I found out that you can get what they call a pipe, pipe, um, looks like almost like a pipe wrench, but it's a pipe um, clamps and they're even cheaper. So I think when I go back to Home Depot, I'm going to have to get um, some of those because I could only make one thing at a time because I only had the two clamps. But if I had more clamps, I could, I could just bang a whole bunch out all in one day. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run back to Home Depot, get more clamps. And this way I have a, a nice uh, arsenal and I could make a whole bunch of these at one time. Now I'm doing the Scarecrow. You can make um, a ghost face. You can make a Frankenstein face for Halloween. You can make a snowman face or um, or like a, a Santa painted all red and then do like the belt going around the middle, like a, a Santa suit, like the middle of his suit. Um, you could do a reindeer face. So I'll be doing some of those for the other holidays. But for right now, this is just for fall. Halloween is my favorite um, holiday, so I can't wait to do some Halloween ones. I think I'll try my hand at a witch's face. Or a pumpkin. You could just do a pumpkin. So now that it's clamped together, I'm unclamping it now because now it's been drying for about four to five hours. Like I said, it was a very, very hot day and it dried pretty quickly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, you can use a furring strip or any scrap piece of wood that you have. I think these are one buys and um, I'm just going to take it and cut it to the length of the back, the width of the back. And I'm going to just uh, put it, attach it with my um, brad nailer so that it gives it more stability and that, you know, God forbid the pieces of wood come apart if, they, if they're not glued well enough. So I just have to cut it down because it's too wide. I just basically want it to go over the five boards. And I'm just going to nail it in place. You could use regular nails. You can screw it in with screws if you don't have a brad nailer. Then also that same type of a piece is what I'm going to use on the opposite side for the for the brim of the hat to make it look like it has a hat on. All right, so now that I have that piece cut, now I'm just going to take my bread nailer and I am going to just nail it into place. And this, like I said, is going to be a support bar for the back. These are so easy to make. If you can find the wood or take apart pallets, then the wood is free. So it's not costing you for the wood, which is the most expensive part. And it's just a matter of paint and some decorations. You'll see how I decorate the top of the hat, how I do the face. But um, I want to get started early, like over the winter. I want to just make a whole bunch of them and put them, you know, store them in my basement somewhere. If I have a room, my husband's going to kill me. And do like a nice craft fair next fall and really have a lot of them to sell. So that's going to be my projects over the winter is to make Thanksgiving, fall Thanksgiving, Halloween, and some Christmas. I could probably do like a bunny one, like with bunny ears or something for, for Easter. So there my board is attached. Now you could see the bottom of it, like the, the wood's not all even across. I could actually go in with the jigsaw and cut that even, but but I didn't, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. These are actually just going to, um, like be standing. Uh, one is for my cousin she ordered and she just wants it for inside her house. 
So I'm going to be putting just two blocks of wood behind it so that it stands up, you know, so she doesn't have to lean it against the wall. But if you wanted to, you could put a pole, a metal pole on, in the back to put it on your front lawn. Or you could just do like I'm doing and I'm going to be putting two blocks of wood behind it. Um, so it could just stand up because these are actually for indoors, like in a foyer or on your porch that's covered. So right now I'm just taking my sander and I'm sanding it down nice. You want to make sure that if any of that liquid nails seeped through the seams that you really get in there good and get all that off. So I'm just going to continue to sand until it's nice and smooth. I'm using um, 80 grit sandpaper. After you do it with that, you can always change to a higher number and, you know, to smooth it out even more. But you want to start with something a little coarser to get all the, you know, the splinters out, especially if you're using old wood, pallet wood, there might be splints or splinters, whatever you want to call them, or little jagged pieces of wood sticking out. So you want to make sure all them are off. So you want to start with a coarser like a 60 grid or 80, and then you could go up to like 120, 200, 220. So now with the brad nailer, I'm putting on the, the rim, the brim of the hat, I should say, and I'm just nailing it in. You don't have to do that many nails. I was just going crazy because I really wanted to stay attached because you really don't even see the nails in the front because they're so small. That's why I love this brad nailer. And then it, it looked like it stopped working for me, but I was out of nails. So I'm just going to put some more nails in it. And then add a few more just to make sure it's on there real well, which it already is, but I just want it to be extra. And I love using that thing, so I, the more I could use it, the better. <laughs> so there you have him. That's that's gonna that's the base. So as you can see, I have two of them going. I didn't film the other one. So now what I'm doing is the face parts. I'm just painting. It's actually it's not a white white, and it's not beige. It's like a antique white. So. It's uh, not 100% pure white, but you can paint the face any color. You could paint it like a straw color or, you know, a beige. But this is what I had on hand, so this is what I'm using. I didn't want to go out and have to buy anything. I have a ton of paints in the garage. So whatever I found is what I'm using. I think the worst part for me is waiting for everything to dry. Like as soon as I paint it, like I want to start decorating it and putting the eyes on and all that. But look, I did two coats and you have to let it dry in between. So that's like the, the, the hardest part for me is waiting for things to dry. I hate waiting for things to dry, but you got to do it. I got a little bit of the white paint on the bottom of the brim of the hat, but when I go inside and I do the eyes and everything and I paint it on my dining room table, I'll show you. I fix all that up so it actually came out perfect. So I'm just continuing to paint. You want to make it a nice good coverage and all on the sides. I didn't finish the back of these pieces. If you want, you can paint the whole back, but because these are going in the house or on a porch or up against the wall, I didn't do the backs. And if you were to keep these outside, you would want to put a light coat of polyurethane on them or some type of a sealer just to seal it from the elements. But I'm actually putting some straw underneath the hat and on top of the hat and some flowers that I picked up from Michael's. 
So this really isn't that great to keep outside because of those elements. But if it was just, just the wood without the other embellishments, by all means, you can keep it outside in the weather. You just want to protect your paint and put um, either a polyurethane or a sealer on it. And if it's going to be staying outside, you want to make sure you get a polyurethane that does not yellow. So they sell them. I know if there's a company called the Winfield Collection that sells a lot of patterns for the outside. And um, they sell the polyurethane that does not yellow. You put it on and the way it goes, that's the way it stays. There's a lot of polyurethanes that once you put it on and it's out in the sun, it tur it'll turn like this white paint. It'll turn it like a light, like a yellow. It's very crazy how it does it, but so just be careful when you buy your polyurethane, ask them if it's going to make your, your piece uh, yellow because you do not want it to yellow over time. I mean, it takes a while to get to that point, but if you're going to put it out every year, probably like by the, the fourth or the fifth year out in the sun, it's going to be yellow. So I'm just continuing to paint. Now I'm doing the hat, the brown hat, which like I said, I had this brown paint that's actually from my dining room and I did my dining room, oh my word, nine, 10 years ago, <laughs> eight years ago, maybe. Yeah, I don't think it was 10, it was probably like seven or eight. And that was in the garage and I said, oh, that'll make a nice color hat instead of going out and buying more brown paint because it's basically like a half a gallon there. And then after I have everything all painted, the hat, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to go in and I'm going to distress it. So I have those little bottles of the craft paint on, on the end of the table there that I got from Michael's, or you can get them from Joann's. They're very cheap. Sometimes you can get them on sale for 50 cents for the little bottle. Otherwise, they're like a dollar. Um... I've never seen the Dollar Tree sell them. I have to look. I really don't go in there looking for paint, but next time I'm in, I'm going to look and see if they have any craft paints like that. They're just acrylic paints. And I have it in like a gold tone, a copper, and a darker brown. And I'm just going to like try to distress the, the top a little bit. So I'm just going to continue to paint. It's the only paintbrush I had besides the roller. I should have ran out and bought bigger paintbrushes, but that's all right. I got it done. It's only going to last another few seconds for this. Sorry. Boring watching me stand there and paint. I forgot to speed this part up. So once every, so once your whole hat is painted, then I'm just going to show you real quick. I think I sped up the wrong one. I wanted to show you how I distressed it. And I think I sped up that, that one, but we'll see. By all means, fast forward it real quick. If you want, I'm just going to end in a couple seconds anyhow. All right, so now let's not go into the next frame. It's weird. I don't know what's going on here, but. Oh, here we go. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so as you can see here now, I'm just adding some darker brown, some gold tone, 
Then I do like a copper, just to try to give it like a distressed kind of look, like it's an older hat, like I don't want it looking new. And then I actually take some sandpaper to it and sand, sand it in a few spots to make it look worn and weathered. And you could do it however you want. You could do a black hat if you want. I think these are super fun to do. They're super cute. And uh, if you can get the wood for free, you know, it's just time consuming. But if you can get your wood for nothing, it's uh, a nice little project for free that you can do. And then if you can sell them, that's even better because you can make money. Like I said, the most involved part is um, waiting for everything to dry, putting it together. So it's a little time consuming. So, of course, your time is worth money. But um, as far as the, the supplies, if you can get the wood for nothing, I actually went to the back of Target in their dumpster because they were redoing the Target and doing something over there. And they were throwing out so much wood, I just grabbed it out of the dumpster and brought it home. I mean, I think I got enough to maybe do six or seven scarecrows. So that's how I'm distressing it. And then I'm just taking um, sandpaper and lightly sanding it in certain spots to make it look, like I said, worn and weathered. You don't have to do this part if you don't want. You could skip this part, but I just love the way that looks. just adds so much character to the piece. My niece wants me to make her one. She loved it. So I think all next week I'm going to be doing a ton of scarecrows. <laughs> I want to make sure I get one for my house. Every time I make stuff, people I put I post it on Facebook and people see it and they're like, "Oh, can I? Get, are you selling them? Can I order one? Can I order one?" And I never ever have anything for my own house. So I definitely have to make sure I'm, I have one for myself because I I think they're so super cute and I just love making them. Yeah, so I like the way he's coming out with the distressed hat. And then I'm going to get busy on distressing the other one. And then getting the face painted on. So I actually bring it inside to get the face on it. And I got to touch up that white paint on the bottom. So I got a lot of touch ups to do once I bring them in. So there you go. That's how it looks distressed. And then that one's not distressed. I like the distressed one so much better. So now I'm inside in my dining room. I have a nice plastic uh, big garbage bag over my dining room table. I don't want to get paint anywhere. So now what I'm going to do with my uh, carpenter's pencil is I'm just going to draw the eyes on just the outside just to get a feel. I don't want to do it with the paint and then you know, have the mess up and then the, then I have to repaint it white and then, you know, because the eyes are going to be black. So I'm going to first do, trace it with, um, trace it, trace the eyes on just with a pencil. So I get my guidelines of how I'm going to put the face on. So once I get that done, I'll be painting in the circle black. I'm also going to draw the carrot nose, uh, carrot, think of a snowman, the triangle nose, just so that I get it even in the middle of the eyes and in the middle of the boards. And you don't want to do this with pen because once you do it with pen, the paint really doesn't cover it that great and you can't erase it off, at least with the pencil. 
you can either erase it or the paint covers it very nicely. Whenever you're doing any woodworking, even if you're uh, putting lines on your boards where you have to cut it, you always want to use a pencil. You never want to use a pen. And those uh, carpenter pencils are so, so, so cheap at Home Depot. I just bought the whole um, tube of them with the, with the sharpener, and I think it was like three bucks. And you get, let me see how many. I'm doing a voiceover, as you can tell, so I'm just looking. You get ten pencils and a sharpener for like three bucks. So now I'm just painting the eyes on with black acrylic paint and a small paintbrush. to where I did my outline, and then I'll fill it in in the middle. I have some smaller pieces of uh, scrap wood, like that, that was plywood. So I think what I want to do with that is cut out some bats and, um, like put a hole in the top and hang them from my tree in the front so I could have all like wooden bats so it looks like they're flying under the tree so I think I'm gonna make some wooden bats I'll do a video on that I wish I could find those little LED lights that um they're probably in the wedding section at Michael's uh I could drill holes in the bat's eyes and put the little individual little tiny LED lights in and they could light up at night. That would be super cute. So probably in about two weeks, once I get these scarecrows done, I'm going to start working on stuff for um, Halloween. I know I need to make a couple of ghosts for my front lawn. Not... Not like this with the pallets put to, with the wood put together with just, you know, plywood. I'll cut out a few, few ghosts. I used to make lawn ornaments years ago, but my lawn ornaments were gorgeous. I mean, the detail was ridiculous. This is like freehand and not a pattern. I'll have to do a separate video on, on lawn ornaments that I used to make years ago. But my husband threw out all my patterns by mistake. The knucklehead. I had over $1,000 worth of patterns. My witch's brew was gorgeous. My eight-foot Frankenstein. My eight-foot uh, Frankenstein's bride. The Medusa. The, the big uh, Dracula. Like, literally took up the whole piece of plywood, and the all uh, used to take me, like, at least 15 hours to paint all the detail. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'll have to put just a little uh, thing together. Not a DIY. As a matter of fact, I don't even have any of them for my own front lawn, because every single one I made, I sold. But my cousin Catherine, who bought a lot of them, and uh, Mary Naftel, um... They always put theirs out every year, and I could always just run past their house houses and take pictures. So if you're into doing woodworking, like, you know, lawn ornaments like this, but you really want, like, detailed ones, it's the Winfield Collection. So it's winfieldcollection.com, and you got to see the stuff that they have. I had so many patterns that I didn't even make. Like, literally didn't even make. They were brand new. And my in a big, gigantic bin, over $1,000 worth. And my husband threw them out. I cried for days. But anyhow. So now I'm painting on his triangle nose. And then what I'm going to do is put two white dots in the eyes and do the eyebrows with some stitches. And then I put the black stitches around the nose. I was going to put the stitches around the mouth too, but I decided not to. As you can see, there's another scarecrow in the back on my floor. But anyhow. All right, so... 
I'm going to do the whites of his eyes now. I didn't mean for this video to be so long, but once I start doing the voiceover, I hate to stop it because then for some reason it doesn't sink in with the rest of the, um, with the video. Once then when I restart it and do it, I got to learn how to do that. So it's basically almost over. I'm just going to show you how I finished the mouth and doing the stitches and the eyebrows and then putting the flowers and the, and the straw on. Now the straw I put underneath the hat, underneath the brim of the hat, I just hot glue it so that it looks like it's his hair coming down in the front. And then I put a whole bunch on the side above the rim on the left side and then with all flowers, it came out real pretty. So I'll show you that. Let me see if I can stop it and then
right, everybody. So there you have it, my beautiful scarecrow. And that's a pumpkin that I made to go with it. I'm selling them as a set. So I really love, sorry about the shaky camera. I don't know what the heck's going on there, but um, so there you have it. And uh, thanks for watching the video. I really love the white pumpkin, like the distressed white farmhouse country type of pumpkin instead of doing an orange one. So I think this makes a perfect set for your porch or for in your home. I appreciate everybody that watched. If you um, are not subscribed, please hit that subscription button. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you are going to make some scarecrows or pumpkins, I'll do a video on the pumpkin. I just don't have one right now. Um, if you're going to make some, please, uh, in the comments, show pictures of your creations. And thanks, everyone, for watching. Everyone have a blessed day. Have a happy fall. And hit that notification bell so you know when my next project is coming up. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.